Anne Whittacombe and Sir John Redway, uh, Redwood are still to come this hour, but first it's time for The Clash. The media and eco doom mongers are up in arms about the looming drought expected to be declared across parts of Britain tomorrow. But often buried is the fact that droughts are relatively common weather events that have been occurring for decades. According to the Environment Agency, severe droughts were recorded as far back as the 1930s and 20s and even the 1880s. Our last was declared pretty much on schedule in 2018. We survived that and we will do again. Thankfully, not everyone has bought into this eco-friendly version of Project Fear. Former Brexit minister and Liz Truss backer Lord Frost has bravely spoken out against the borderline hysterical sense of emergency attached to climate concerns. In a new essay for the policy exchange think tank urging the UK to ditch renewable energy, Frost said, The current evidence does not support the assertion that we are in a climate emergency. Rather, the effects of climate change are a problem, one of the many we face, and should be tackled in that pragmatic way rather than by asking us to upend the whole way our societies work. Here, here. Now, let me be clear. Neither Frost nor I deny that climate change is real, but the highly respected pair is right to say that we should not be hectoring people to the point it, quote, seems normal to be lectured about the moral aspects of virtually every choice in our everyday lives. So, what do you think? Is Lord Frost right to say we are not in a climate emergency? Email me down at gbnews.uk, tweet me at gbnews, I'll poll running there too, the results shortly. But to give their take and to help you make up your mind, I'm joined by the economist and energy researcher Laurie Leyburn, spokesperson for Annabel Rebellion, Orla Coughlin, and author and social commentator Adrian Hayes. Adrian, you are with Lord Frost on this, I believe. Good evening, Dan, and good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, I am. And I, I'll say right from the start that more than perhaps anybody else in this country or many in the world, I've actually witnessed climate change firsthand walking to the North Pole where the ice was one metre thick a few years ago, used to be five metres thick, crossing the length of Greenland where we work with Denmark's senior ice scientists. And so I, I've witnessed it. It's happening. Global warming's happening. Um, man-made or natural causes, I think the jury's out. I think, personally, I think it's a bit of both. Uh, is it natural, the present to droughts and everything part of the climate change? Possibly. The modelling's where I'm a little bit suspicious about, because as we've seen in other factors, modelling can be well out. But not, putting that all aside, it's happening. And we've got, like we ensure our house, we put alarms, we put locks, we put security. I do believe to start with, we have to do something about climate change. So I'm with Orla and Laurie to start with on that Orla, the issue is not so much that we have to do something, it's about the pace, isn't it? And Lord Frost says, hang on a moment, this isn't an emergency. Um, thanks for having me um, on the show, Dan. Um, it absolutely is an emergency. Um, and I'd, I'd like to say, like, I'm, um, my background is not a scientist. Um, I'm a nurse, um, specifically a children's nurse. And... Um, I'd like to say that I think the general public um, can understand that we are in a crisis. All we have to do is look towards the most recent IPCC report. Um, and for context, the IPCC report is um, 234 scientists, the top scientists of different countries around the world coming together and looking at 14,000 different studies. It's not one study. It's not a couple of studies. Um, and as you said, you, know, you, you think that the, the jury's out on this. Um, but this IPCC report has said very clearly that this is a code red for humanity. I, know, David the UN, King, the I, I mean, look, I'm a bit older than you, but in reality, Ola, for my entire life, the UN have been issuing these doomsday warnings. They started in the 70s. Uh, it continued when I was growing up in the 80s uh, about the ozone hole, which is now, by the way, pretty much closed. Is it not a bit, Ola, like the Great Barrier Reef? It's going to be destroyed. And actually, when people dig down and actually look at the evidence, it's in better shape than it has been for 30 years. Well, this is what I'm saying. You know, this is 14,000 scientific studies that have accumulated together. You know, it's not just one study. It's not two studies. It's not one thing. This is 14,000 studies that are saying that it is a code red for humanity that we need to find solutions urgently, urgently. And Sir David King, who's the ex-chief scientific advisor of the UK, has said last year that we have three to four years to determine the future of humanity. That's this year, two to I three know, and, years. And I've been saying that for the past 30 or 40 years. That's reality. Laurie, uh, you are not with Lord Frost on this. No, and can I just say that the, to take some of the points that have just been discussed, 
there is a graph in the latest IPCC report that shows that it is a result of human activity. I mean, the science is now so advanced now that we can actually identify that it is almost exclusively a result mm -hmm. of human activity that we're facing this global temperature rise. That question is now closed. It's done. We are mm -hmm. very advanced with the science here. The second thing to say is that the, the IPCC is slightly separate to what you're calling the UN there, right? This is a, a report, a, a, a body that brings together the best available science, as we were just hearing, okay? If you look at those reports, they have been very guarded in their language. Some people say, in fact, too guarded in their language. That is separate to what some people in the UN have been saying. But we have now, as we've just been hearing, got to the point where those highly detailed reports that show the very best of the science are saying we are at the point where this it might be proportionate to be thinking about this in the terms that you could apply words like emergency to. And we're seeing that all around us, right? It's not just heat waves and fires, which are now more extreme than they have ever been in many places. It's the threats to the things that are really important in our lives, like food supply, like the ability to work outdoors and other things that are being impacted by this in a way that we have not seen before in the available record of our of our weather and how the climate has changed. Uh, far fewer people, by the way, are dying now from weather events than ever have. I, I, I think one thing that's really dangerous, Laurie, is to say on any issue, by the way, on any issue, and I especially say this after the two years that we've just lived through and all the lies that we've been told about uh, the COVID and, and the vaccine, the science is never closed, okay? You should never just say the science is closed. Science is never closed. And, and it almost feels uh, quite zealot-like for you to say that because surely you want to keep investigating, you want to keep researching, mm -hmm. that's the point of science. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I strongly agree with that. I don't think there ever will be. I agree. The, the science should you never be described as closed. No, I said a qu there is one question, which is, is this caused by humans, that is largely closed. In the same way that if you went out and you smoked 100 cigarettes a day for your entire life, and then you got lung cancer, the science that we have will make a link between that smoking activity and then the illness that you have then got, right? Yeah. So the question, is, the, the question is, the question is, from from Lord Frost, though, is is actually not questioning that point about whether the climate is changing. It's about whether we're in an emergency, whether ordinary folk should have to give up eating meat, uh, should have to give up flying, because all of that's what your group wants, right? The animal rebellion. Can we just be clear about this? You think that there should be no farming of animals in the UK, no consumption of meat, right? Uh, no foreign travel on planes whatsoever. Yeah, so we're a group um, that are campaigning towards a plant-based future. And our demands are that the government support farmers and the fishing communities in transitioning to a plant-based food system. And in doing that, we're also asking the government that they will rewild all of the freed up land um, that will be that will come from this um, plant-based future, and that we will have a bigger program of wildlife restoration and, and ultimately carbon drawdown. Have you seen the study today, by the way, all of that I spoke about at the top of the show? Uh, it's a Leeds University study over the past uh, 20 years of 26,000 women showing that they're far more likely to have serious hip breaks later in life if they're on a plant-based diet. Do you have any evidence that, a, that an all-plant-based diet is actually safe for humans? Absolutely. The World Health Organization has said that a plant-based diet is healthy for all stages of life. Oh, well, if and they we say it, if they say it, I certainly don't believe it. Well, I'm not finished. Sorry. Sorry, I'm not finished. Um, and we also know that a plant-based diet is um, reducing heart attacks, it's reducing stroke, and it's a massive reduction um, to obesity. Okay. So, and, and, and a heart attack is the leading hips. cause of people. Uh, of people Adrian Hayes, obesity. you've obviously listened to all of that. What do you want to come back on? Firstly, I don't lorry with respect. The science is never settled, I'd say that. There is a big volume of scientists who don't disagree with this, but they've been cancelled. That's the first thing. Secondly, I think we need to define, redefine the English language. What is an emergency and a crisis and catastrophe? Yeah. I've seen global warming. Yes, I agree with. Climate change, yes. But climate crisis, climate emergency, climate catastrophe means yes. it's happening imminently. I believe we've got time. But the biggest thing, and this is where I really do stress, I the problem when you... Obsessed. We, we face many risks in the world, from asteroid collision to nuclear war to food resources to population. When you obsess on one single risk, 
And when you look at one single issue within that risk, carbon dioxide, a life-giving gas, and when you look at one solution, net zero, you're in danger economic impacts, which we know very well about this year, society impacts, but also, this is why I really stress, environmental impact. I'm personally far less worried about carbon dioxide emissions in the air as I'm with nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, lead pollution, all these other pollutants that are killing five to 10 million people today. I'm more worried about the pesticides and chemicals that big food corporations put in our food leaking into our rivers, that sewer water companies, raw sewage putting into our rivers, killing all wildlife, what chemical companies are putting into our lakes, our oceans, our rivers, our seas, our plastics going in the ocean, our resource depletion to pay for all of our data requirements, to pay for our EVs, to pay for our windmill yeah, yeah, yeah. blades, resource depletion, deforestation, farmlands, three billion plastic masks in the ocean, overfishing with mass trawlers, with spotter plays, deep, just decimating all these fish things. These are bigger problems, and none of these were caused by climate change. These are caused by humans. And yet yeah. I don't see Extinction Rebellion protesting on the streets of Jakarta about deforestation. I don't see uh, animal welfare rights lobbyists protesting about all the chemicals in our food and pesticides. No, I don't see any of these protests taking place. These are the real crises that I believe we need to solve. And this is far more important than climate yeah, change, where we've got many decades to resolve. Lots of great points there, absolutely. And Ola, I guess that's something that I really want to second uh, from Adrian and get you to pick up on. For me, it's the language. I mean, you might be surprised to know, Walla, I'm an environmentalist. I've been an environmentalist uh, since the 80s. I grew up in New Zealand. Uh, but because of the way that I was uh, terrorised, actually, as a child by folk like you who were telling me that I wasn't going to be around in 20 years' time because of the ozone hole, I'm incredibly angry with the rhetoric that you use. And it is wanting to terrify kids. And you use very basic weather events, like at the moment, three days of hot weather, essentially, to say that we're in an emergency. And as Adrian says, Ola, we do have time. We are heading towards net zero, but we have to do it responsibly. Because if we don't, Ola, the economic catastrophe for this country will actually cause far more deaths than climate change. I'd just like to say, yeah, um, that we agree on so much, Adrian um, and Dan as well. Um, all of us here agree on so much that we need to look after nature, yeah. that we need, you know, exactly. these it's massive, about the language. Um, it's about the language, and that's what this debate is about because Lord Frost says we're not in an emergency. Stop being irresponsible. That's what we're disagreeing on, Orla. Well, we can have all of these wider issues and still be in an emergency. Um, and these issues are so interconnected. And that's why we see that if we transition to a plant-based food system, we can rewild the UK. We can bring back these fires. By the way, Ola, I don't agree with you on that. I am a great carnivore. That's, that's what the science, I, I love what the science meat. from Oxford is it's saying. So I don't care what they're saying. Nothing is going to stop me eating meat for as long as I live. Uh, final word to you, Laurie. The US military which we cannot accuse of being a socialist organisation, describes the climate crisis as a threat multiplier. It makes the greatest threats to our shared security, to our well-being as a nation, and to the US and other countries around the world. It makes those countries less secure. It does that because when the temperature gets higher and higher, things start to impact how we grow food. They start to impact how people move around the world. They start to cause all of these additional problems. It saturates everything. The stuff that we've seen recently, right, is extraordinary. We had the Met Office, again, not a, a, a hive of socialists who are plotting certain things, quite mm. actually, quite nerdy yeah, scientists. These <laughs> no, they, they don't, because they're, these guys are the holders of an amazing body of British science that we should be hugely proud I, of. They I want them a, to tell me the weather. I don't want them to terrify me or preach to me. That's not their job. Well, and what they did, so what they did the other day is they did a weather forecast of what it could look like in 2050 if we didn't get on top of the climate crisis, right? It was speculative, yeah, We right? are getting on top that. of it open about it. And then, actually, the kind of weather they forecast happened the other week. And that was extraordinary. And that is an example of these kind of the, the multiplier of threats that the climate crisis yes. is Indeed. bringing to but, us. But we also yeah. had that in 1976 too. And, and that's, no, not to no, to that's not to dismiss 
that things are changing, but I think we can't use every individual freak weather event to declare an emergency. But fascinating, very respectful debate. Thank you all for having it. That was The Economist and Energy Researcher Laurie Leyburn, spokesperson for Animal Rebellion, Orla Coughlin, and author and social commentator Adrian Hayes. Thank you all. So who do you agree with? Is Lord Frost right that we are not in a climate emergency from Kojak?